I read in the paper this morning that uh, the Nine Board, which has faced a lot of scrutiny and challenges in recent times, particularly with the resignation of Peter Costello, the chair, um, I read this morning that they've uh, assembled a uh, sort of a recruitment uh, committee to look at the makeup of the board and to potentially appoint two new board members and to bring in that succession planning. Um, it raises, though, an interesting sort of question, you know, when was, you know, when should we have been planning for succession and having the, the backup plans in place? And, you know, it's a topic that's really close to my heart because I'm not seeing enough boards really getting on the front foot where uh, board succession planning is concerned and not having the backup talent pools. And one of the key ways that you can do this effectively is to think about bringing in independent individuals into your committees. So your committees are really crucial because that's where a lot of the board papers are often developed. It's where a lot of the hard yards, the hard work is, is done. And it's often where you need that independent expertise coming into that uh, mindset and feeding back up to the board. And it's an incredible way to test out talent, to build up talent for the boardroom. And if you are working your, your committees and your advisory boards in the right way, that is one effective way to have some succession planning in place for the board of directors. And keep in mind, increasingly, we're seeing a fair bit of volatility in the, uh, the board director market. Just in recent times, I've had a lot of people resign because of health issues. And so, you know, you've got a, a sort of scenario where you do always have to have a plan B. And it's not always appropriate, I don't think, to be going to market and sort of searching for talent. You really should have that talent pool on your books well before you actually need it. And I know a lot of my more modern clients, are, you know, when they recruit for board members, they're using it as an opportunity to build out their talent pool for the future, for future appointments as well. And that can include advisory boards and committee boards, uh, committee uh, structures. So there's definitely a, a need to be, uh, you know, having the plan A and plan B in place. And I think as board members, you should almost be constantly looking for your re replacement and looking for alternative individuals. And at some point in time, even if your board is sort of relatively stable, even during that year, you should at the very least have, a, you know, your skill matrix in place and you should have a, a second uh, row, if you like, of talent that could be, you know, called upon in an emergency or, you know, eventually could be used as potential replacements. So it's getting that succession planning right and incorporating that into, you know, what is often a very busy agenda of a lot of things to think about. But it's important that succession planning is given some priority here. And it's, uh, you know, something that's on the mind of the chair and the, the nomination committees and all the board members. So you're never caught off guard because the reality is you really can't afford to, you know, have missing board members members for a period of time. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how the board refreshment goes at nine. That's certainly a high profile one to watch. But I think you're going to see a lot of succession planning start to creep in over the next 12 months, 18 months, because I think there's going to be a need to have that second uh, row of talent ready to go to support the boards as they go forward.